this course is presented to you free of charge by TTJ Tech Services of www.ttjtech.biz and by Stir It Up of www.stirritup.com. And remember, stir is spelled with a U, not an I. So that's S-T-U-R-I-T-U-P dot com. TTJ Tech Services and Stir It Up are pleased to offer this course to you to the glory of God and to the benefit of all those who listen. This is Voice Over In and Out, and this is session number four today, and uh, we are going to pick up where we left off. Uh, we have, once again, uh, a packed house, praise God, and a packed agenda. We are very excited to be sharing with you today some of these predictable patterns that we've been talking about. Because if you recall, we said that we um, can kind of get used to what um, VoiceOver has to offer by learning the fundamentals. And that almost every app, now there are, of course, some, you know, there are going to be some weird exceptions, but basically every app uh, that you will deal with is going to conform to one of a few um, predictable patterns or, or standards that we can sort of latch on to and become familiar with. So we're going to show you those today. We're going to show you a few of them anyway. Um, one week from today, we do begin our experience labs, and, and that's you know, same link, same class time, everything like that. None of that is different. Nothing changes there. But it's just going to be the format in which we do things. We're going to be looking at the way we use our devices. We're building content around experiences rather than just lessons. So that's going to be quite exciting. We're looking forward to that. Um, VoiceOver makes it very easy to interact with every aspect of our device. And that does include typing. And so before we get into any of these predictable patterns, we want to look at typing just briefly today. Now, I will tell you this. Um, this is not something we're going to teach all in one day uh, because we are going to need to learn how to do advanced editing. Um, you know, I want to go back and I want to read what I've typed character by character, word by word, or even line by line. And as I do that, Oops, I made a mistake, you know, I, I found a, a something, a typo, right? So I know I need to learn how to correct that typo, delete a letter, add a letter, um, even perform a spell check. Um, and I, I need to learn how to do all of these things. And so that's not all going to happen today. We're just going to learn the basics of typing today um, because I really want to get to these patterns. We'll continue that on Monday as well. Um one of the things I want to address with this typing is the um, sort of automated typing that kind of falls under one of two categories, autocorrect and quick type, uh, which is often referred to as predictive text. So I want to talk about that as well, because there's a lot of folks, a lot of folks in the uh, visually impaired community who just disable that and they don't actually use it because they think it's going to be too difficult and really and truly they're missing out on some great features they're missing out on things that are going to make their lives a whole lot easier if they've just properly learned how to work with um quick type and autocorrect autocorrect and quick type have gotten even better in ios 17 and they learn your behavior they learn the way that you type uh they they learn all of those things and so these, these are really important features, um, but a lot of folks just don't, don't know how to work with them or they're, they're nervous about it and they think it's confusing and, and it, it's, you know, it's something we can learn. Uh, so we're going to show you that a little bit today. I also want to point out that the, um, the uh, other methods of typing that are not on screen, like Braille displays, Braille screen input, handwriting, Bluetooth keyboards. That is later in this course. That's not today. We are still working entirely on screen. We need to master on screen first. Uh, it does not really seem uh, to be practical 
to carry around a Bluetooth keyboard everywhere you go. I know some of them are very small. I know some of them are foldable, all of this. But the reality of it is your iPhone fits in a pocket or a purse. You don't want to have to pull out something else every time you want to type. We don't want to have to rely on something else. We need to learn how to use the on-screen keyboard. Uh, we also can make use of dictation. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today as well. All right. So uh, let's let's talk about the basic means of typing. And for right now, you already know how to use voiceover. We've learned a fundamental that's going to carry through to the keyboard, which is that if you tap on anything on the screen or you swipe to anything on the screen, it brings focus to it. Remember, it brings the voiceover cursor to that particular, excuse me there, to that particular thing that you've that you've tapped on or, or swiped to. Then if you double tap on whatever it is that your focus is on, it's going to activate it. It's going to open an app. It's going to select a, a checkbox. It's going to insert a character if you're on a letter of the on-screen keyboard. And so at its most basic, Typing on the screen is really no different at all than using voiceover to navigate anywhere else. You can do it in the same way. But Apple has created some alternative typing modes that have made it way easier once you become more familiar and more comfortable with voiceover. So if you're a new voiceover user, you can just use the on-screen keyboard just like you've used anything else. Now, I would encourage you to try to learn the layout of the on-screen keyboard. And the good news is, if you're already a typist, if you know how to type well um, without sort of the hunt and peck method, if you have a traditional mechanical keyboard memorized, you're going to have no problem with the on-screen keyboard because it's the same layout. I mean, there's a few little differences here and there, but all the letters are laid out in the same way. It's the QWERTY layout. Uh, when I say have the, on, ha have the mechanical keyboard memorized, I'm not just talking about you can sort of, you know, feel your way through it. I'm talking about a really deep understanding of it, a really comfortable knowledge of it so that you know it so well, it's like the back of your hand as the expression goes. So that if I say to you, uh, what comes to the left of the letter P? You say, oh, you don't even have to think about it. What comes to the right of the letter J? K. And then what? L. And then what? Semicolon. So you, you, you learn it so well. And if you are not that comfortable with it yet, you know, there are lessons that you can find. There are apps that you can use. There are typing games. There are ways that you can master typing. Uh, both on a mechanical keyboard and on a touch screen. And, and you can find things on YouTube and you can search for them and, uh, you know, other places online. But this typing is a very important skill, not just for the iPhone, but for anything that, that's going to require typing. I, I learned the, the typing, uh, you know, skill in the keyboard when I was about five years old. Um, my mom was a secretary and I would always hear her type super fast and I would be really impressed with it. And I said, I want to be able to do that. And, you know, knowing that I would probably be using a computer in school since I wasn't writing by hand, um, you know, I, I was already blind at that point. You know, she she thought it was a good idea, too. And I learned how to type at the age of five and I did these exercises. And, you know, uh, now I, I can type very fast. I, I don't know how many words a minute because there aren't a whole lot of um websites that measure that without having a predetermined script that you have to type. And that's hard because if somebody's reading you that script or you're waiting for a screen reader or something, there's a, a lot of time lost in the translation. There's one or two that actually let you just type whatever you want and measure it. But, you know, I, I, I give all the glory to God, of course. I'm not boasting, but I, I think I could do pretty well if we would measure the, you know, the typing speed. Um, this is a good skill. And if you get this skill, you're going to have a much easier time with the on-screen keyboard of the iPhone or the iPad because it's the exact same layout. And so if you know that J comes to the right of the letter H, if you know that E comes to the right of the letter W, 
and R comes to the left of the letter T and Z. Come, you know, if you know these kinds of things and you know that layout so well that you can just recite it, what's the top row? Well, it's QWERTY. You know, we know that just from the word QWERTY, but it's Q-W-E-R-T-Y-U-I-O-P, A-S-D-F-G-H-J-K-L, and then, you know, Z-X-C-V-B-N-M. If you can do that, if you got that well of, a, of an understanding of it, and then you can translate it into what your muscles are doing in your hands and your fingers. So you've got this muscle memory that is working for you as well. You're not going to have much of a problem with the on-screen keyboard. And I'm convinced that most people who struggle with the on-screen keyboard probably need to perfect their typing and keyboard skills anyway. Now, I, I can't say that 100% because there's always exceptions to every rule, right? Or many of them, uh, you know, but it's not, not trying to offend anybody or anything, but I, I'm convinced that most of the time that's the case. Um, because if you know the keyboard really, really well, then there's no reason that you cannot learn to approximate where the letters are on the iPhone screen. It's smaller, so you'll have to spend a few minutes with it. But again, muscle memory combined with some deductive reasoning should make this pretty easy. Are you going to be perfect? No. But you know what? Even sighted users aren't perfect. That's why we have autocorrect. They, you know, especially on an on screen, you know, I'll be talking to somebody, me and my mom or something. She's looking up something and she'll say, oh, my, I just typed, you know, whatever instead of what it was supposed to be. Because, you know, it's a it's a smaller screen. You know, we do that. It's not necessarily that you're going to be perfect. But if you can do reasonably well, if you can be more accurate than not by finding the letters by touch instead of having to swipe, it's going to save you a ton of time. It's going to save you a lot of frustration. And it's going to make the on-screen keyboard actually really fun. So I'm going to demonstrate. Um, now, I'm using a different typing mode uh, because I, I, am, I, I like to do uh, typing much more quickly. So we need to talk about the typing modes. Um, I told you a moment ago that if you simply touch a letter or swipe to a letter and then double tap on that letter, it gets inserted. That's the default. That's called standard typing. Standard typing is where every new voiceover user, I think, ought to start. And it's by default. There are a couple of other typing modes. And you can access these through your settings. You can also put typing mode in the rotor if you want to do that. Um, so the next typing mode that Apple created is called touch typing. Now, touch typing allows you to find the letter and then lift your finger to have that letter inserted. Now, the uh, obvious benefit to that is it's going to save the extra double tap, but it still allows you, if you've landed on the wrong letter, to sort of swipe to the correct letter before lifting your finger. So I'm going to show you those two, what they sound like, and then we're going to try um, uh, my favorite one, which is direct touch. There's also slide to type or quick path typing, which I'm going to just mention briefly, but I'm not a, a huge fan of it. Um, nothing wrong with it. It works with voiceover. It's usable, but I just don't, it's not my favorite. So I'm going to talk about it briefly, but not really spend much time with it. So let's get my iPhone here. Get some more sound. Siri suggestions, doc, messages, five unread messages. All right. And apparently I got some messages while we were waiting or, or while we were starting class. So I just, just want to make sure that there's nothing urgent. I don't check messages during uh, during class for now. Um, and, and do not disturb is on. But I do want to uh, just make sure there's nothing urgent here. Okay. And let's see if there's anything urgent. I apologize, guys. We'll edit this out in the on the recording too. Um, and okay. All right. So um, now uh, I've got my phone here, and I'm going to open up a message conversation. Um, Sarah Potok message, iMessage, text field. Double tap to edit, swipe up or down to select a custom action, 
then double tap to activate. So, use the rotor to access misspelled words, mentions. And you even heard that you can use the rotor to access misspelled words and mentions. We don't even know what that is if we're new voiceover users, do we? But we'll get to that. But uh, this is an edit field in the messages app, and it said double tap to edit. So that's what I'm going to do. Message. Text field is editing. I message. Insertion point at start. Now you heard it say is editing. So we know that it's uh, ready to start typing. And you, you heard that the insertion point is at the start. Really, it's an empty edit field. So it doesn't matter. The start and the end are the same right now. Um, but we can start to type. And, and I'm going to set my typing mode to standard. In order to do this, I want to bring focus to the keyboard first. So I'm going to double, I'm just going to single tap and hold my finger here like on a, return. there's the return on the bottom, the okay, on the bottom right. Now I'm going to turn the rotor until I hear typing mode. Mentions, misspelled words, edit, typing mode, direct touch typing. And I'm going to change it for now. Standard typing. To standard. Now this enables me to type in the method, in the way that I described. I can tap on any letter. Cap G, cap J, cap I. But it's not India. inserting it. And you hear that voiceover says the name of the letter and then it says the phonetic pronunciation. You can change that in your settings if you don't like that. Um, if I want to insert a letter, I just double tap once I've, once I've brought focus to it. I also want to point out that I can swipe. But let's show you the difference between swiping and then trying to know approximately where the letters are, even if it's not perfect. If I want to type the word hi, H-I, and I have no interest in learning the on-screen keyboard, I'm going to end up finding myself doing something like this. Cap A, cap S, cap D, cap F, cap G, cap H. Okay, there's the H. I swiped to the right till I found it. Now I can double tap. Cap H. And it inserted it. Now, I don't know where any of the keys are, pretend, so I got to swipe till I find the I. Well, which way should I go? I don't know. J, K, L, Shift, Z, X, C, V, B, N, L, Delete, Number, Space, Return, Demote, Dictate, 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 Dictate. Well, that was a total waste of time. Um, I don't know where the keys are, so I got to swipe all the way back. Oh, I passed it. Look, I got to go back. There it is. And then we double tap. So it took me almost a minute to write the word high. Obviously not reasonable and not a way of, of life. We don't want to do that. So let's put a space in here. Space. Space. High. And now it, it says the word when you, when you put a space. And uh, I might have to move because apparently the puppy sees something out the window. Hopefully that, well, maybe not. Okay, we'll see. But I, I want to, I'm in a good position here. So I like this, but we'll see what she does. So now you saw that that's not reasonable. I mean, to type that way, that's just going to take you hours to type a sentence. Uh, if I have an approximation based upon my experience, muscle memory, and my knowledge of where the, how the keyboard is laid out, I probably can do this without having to miss a beat. So I'm gonna try to type high, I'm still in standard typing. And if I'm wrong, I'll swipe once or twice to the left or to the right, but at least I'll be much closer. So I'm gonna kind of find my H here in my mind and I'm gonna- H, H, I, I, space, space, R, R. Whoops, I didn't want an R. T, T, H, 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 E, R, R, E. So I wrote, I wrote hi there in about a quarter of the time that it took me to write the word hi the first time, simply by knowing where the letters are. And I made one mistake when I wanted to put the T and I accidentally touched the R and I didn't even take my own advice and swipe. And I had done it too fast and inserted the R before I ever thought about it. So I went down and deleted it and then I did the T and now I've got hi there. So it took me a fraction of the time and no mistakes. I mean, I made one mistake, but I corrected it. So there are no errors in what I type now. And that was a fraction of the time because I know where the letters are laid out on the keyboard. And I encourage you to employ that method. Now, I'm not going to spend time teaching you everything about the keyboard. I want you to explore it for yourself. But it's going to take you... Uh, it's going to take you personally spending time with it 
in order for you to really, really get comfortable with it. It's not about me just telling it to you. You have to actually get comfortable with it for yourself. And once you do, you'll be able to do what I just did. So I'm not going to go over the whole keyboard for you. I will tell you a couple of little tips. I will tell you that on an iPhone, if you go down to the bottom row of letters, the ZX, TVB, and M, to the right of the M, M is Mike. Delete. the delete. And when you look at an Apple keyboard, Apple keyboards do not use backspace. So if we're Windows users, we know there's a backspace and a delete. Backspace deletes the previous character and delete actually removes the next character to the right of the insertion point. And that is not the way Apple keyboards work. Whether you're on a Mac, iOS, iPad, whatever, there's only one delete. It's called delete, but it actually functions sort of like backspace. It deletes the previous character. So that's what my delete does. I can double tap that to delete a letter, the previous letter. And if I hold it down, it's going to delete everything. I could just keep holding it and it'll, you know, it'll delete for me. Uh, but that is to the right of the letter M. M. Delete. And then Numbers. we go down to the next row, the bottom row with the ZX, uh, or, or I mean the, below the Z, X, and C. What's to the left of the Z, guys? Shift. The shift. Quadruple tap to enter caps lock. Action and you, you, you heard it say quadruple tap to enter caps lock because we can do that if we want to. Uh, we can actually... Uh, um, Shift. Let's see. Quad shift. Quadruple tap to enter caps lock. Actions available. There's also caps lock. Activate default. There's actions. That's why it said actions available, right? Um, and if I do this, shift. Quadruple tap to enter selected. Shift. That's just a double tap. Now it's selected. So the next letter I type. Cap F. is going to be capitalized. Truck selected. Shift. Now I turned it off with a double tap. Shift. Quadruple tap to enter caps lock. Okay. Selected. And now Shift. it's selected again and I can uh, I can you know insert a capital lock. letter selected. or I can Shift. Shift. deselect it. So that's to the left of the letter Z. And again your delete key is to the right of the letter M. That's both in that same row. Now down on the next row below the letters, we heard what that was. Numbers. Use the rotor to access misspelled words, mentions. Okay, but listen again. Shift. And down here. Numbers. Numbers. Numbers is going to switch us to the numeric keyboard because that's one difference where the um, on screen keyboard of an iPhone does not have a number row like a physical mechanical keyboard does. Wow. Your um, iPad, the iPad Pro, the large iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch one, does have a number row. All the other ones do not. Uh, instead, there are other ways to get them. And one way is to use that numbers button at the bottom left of the on-screen keyboard. Now, if you want to actually um, know what that looks like for sighted users, it, it's like it's got a one, two, three on it. It's a, you know, uh, an icon that shows you that, that it's numbers. And so when I, when I choose that option, it's now going to give me um, the one through nine and, of course, the zero. And it's also going to give me common punctuation, period, comma, exclamation mark, question mark, those kinds of things, and a few others. There's another, once you go into numbers, Another option for a symbols keyboard, which actually has a lot more symbols as well. So we have letters, we have numbers, and we have symbols. All right, to switch, we double tap on that. Yeah, numbers. Okay. Use the rotor. Now, to also on that row space. is the space, the space bar. Return. The return. So the space is kind of the bottom center. Space. Return is return. bottom now. right. Bottom right, and then emoji down below Rock, that. And tap and hold and drag to another keyboard. Right. So down below the um, 
down below the numbers is the emoji or globe key, which allows me to um, use my, you know, my different emoji. And you can have a globe key, too, if you have multiple keyboards. We just have emoji. Emoji. And then we can insert uh, different emoticons and dictate. dictate to the right. Double tap to start dictation. Double tap with two fingers when finished. Now, you heard a little handy hint there. Double tap to start dictation and double tap with two fingers when finished. That's um, the magic tap, which we talked about last week. It only works for voiceover users, okay? So if we're in an edit field and the focus is on the keyboard, we can magic tap to start and stop dictation. Alternatively, we can use that to dictate button we just found down there. That's a microphone button uh, for those people who uh, are seeing it. Now, uh, that is the main on-screen keyboard. I didn't switch to numbers or anything, okay? As I said, I want you to explore it for yourself. I'm not going to go through all of it with you, but I want to show you how to do that. So if we want to change to numbers. Numbers. Double tap. Use the rotor. Now I'm in numbers and you can see everything's different. One, three, seven, eight, nine. I'm just sliding my finger along. Below the numbers. Hyphen, slash, colon, semicolon, left, paren. Right, and there's even a row below that. Now, if you look at the bottom left. Letters, symbols. You have letters and then symbols. Tap to symbols above letters. We're going to go back to letters. Letters. Okay. G. Now we're back on the, the G. <laughs> on, the, on, the, uh, on the letters. All right, so I've typed hi there. And I want to insert a period. And so I have to go to the, the uh, numbers keyboard to find the period and, and double tap it, right? Actually, no, because there's a period shortcut. And that is two spaces quickly. Space, space. So I'm going to do that. Space. There it is. And we'll, we'll actually triple tap for voiceover users, double tap for sighted users, because you have to double tap to insert a period. And so we're going to actually have to triple tap because we had a double tap to put one space in. We need to put two in. Space. Okay. And I might actually have been wrong. I think I actually have to quadruple tap in this mode. I forgot. Yeah, that's my fault, guys. I apologize. That's because I'm not in direct touch typing. I got a quadruple tap because triple tap is the long press. So I have to. Space. Space. Now Period. it put it in there. Yep. That was my mistake. So it's uh, it's absolutely in there now. There's a period in there, and basically that is the uh, the way you insert a period and a space. Again, it's called the period shortcut, and it is done by doing two spaces quickly in a row. Don't forget that if you are... Uh, you're sort of used to the old method, which is a, a two spaces after a period. That's actually not what they do anymore. They do a period and one space. And so that period shortcut takes care of that for you. And the good part is we have a period here. Three. And we have a period space. Uh, our, our caps, you know, they're already ready to insert a capital letter now because we have a period. Cap H. So you can hear that they're capitalized. All right. I'm going to switch to touch typing. Mentions. Miss edit typing mode touch typing now touch typing is the one i described to you wherein you uh find the letter you want and as soon as you lift your finger it gets inserted so we're going to type hi there again and you'll see a little bit of a difference of what that sounds like cap cap hey, hi space on r now see if i found the wrong letter like the r, r. just don't lift r. and what you do is you you can, uh, uh, like, what? Now I found the T. I just swiped to the right. So now I got the T. H E E. Okay. Numbers. Per period. There. And we got hi there. Space. All right. Now, the last method I'm going to show you is the direct touch typing. And this is my favorite one. And it's the one I use typically. Anytime you hear direct touch when it relates to a voiceover user, what it indicates is that you're not using a voiceover cursor. You are interacting directly with the app or the area of the screen, just like your sighted counterparts would do. You can still hear voiceover speech, but there's no voiceover cursor. It's just interacting directly with the screen. So that affects only the typing in this app. The rest of the screen does not go to direct touch. 
in the messages app. It stays normal, but we're going to set the rotor to typing here. Mention miss edit typing mode, direct touch typing. Okay. Now, Return. if I hold my finger on a letter, it does not get inserted. Cap Cap okay. Unless I hold Cap it too long, space. but Cap G. see, it doesn't Auto. insert it. Okay. But if I'm ready to type, I'm going to type hi there and I can type much more quickly now. Cap A D O E. Period. There. Then we just typed hi there. Okay. And that's how easy that was. That's direct touch typing. The moment you tap the letter, it gets inserted right away, unless you hold your finger there for a second. So if you're, you know, you can still swipe, but that's a lot harder to, to do because then you have to double tap somewhere else on the screen completely. So you're you're really typing just direct how are space. you? Cap it up as how are you you space are you now what happened there? What did you just hear? Well, first of all, I accidentally typed an S instead of a W in how, but it auto-corrected. The second thing that happened is as soon as I started typing the word R, it knew that I wanted to type U. So I want to do that again. I'm going to go back up here and put a space, question mark, okay. space. Let's do it again, but I'm going to do it much more slowly so you can hear what happens. Cap H O A. Oop, I missed. How? That's okay. R. -E Look at that. It already knows that I want, I just typed an A. It already has R E space U, Y O U. So if I just go to the question mark, question mark, U, it filled it in for me. Listen, I'll, I'm not, I haven't taught you how to go back and read this, but Words. let me just do it. How, how are you question mark characters? See, it knew what I wanted to do, and I didn't have to type anything other than the A. So I typed how. A and it inserted the R E space Y O U question mark. Now, if I didn't want to type that, I could have continued. I could have ignored what it said and I could have just kept typing anything else that I wanted to. But because that's actually what I wanted, I just put a space or a punctuation. In my case, it was a question mark and that automatically typed the correct thing. If you, you have to really kind of work with this and learn how, because if, if I, I can't, I'm not even going to get into that because it's a little tricky until you see it. So let me type a little bit more and see if I can give you, uh, if, if it'll do that again for some other words that I might want to type. Um, let's, uh, let's say, can we have lunch tomorrow? I don't know if that's going to uh, have any quick type or, or anything in it, Question but let's try it. Space. So can't I'll type slowly again so you can caps A N space W E space V H F B. Okay, it's got have in there because it said V, so I'm gonna press space. Space have. All right, so it did do have. Lunch. Yep, it's got lunch. Press space. Space lunch tomorrow. T O M. There it is tomorrow, and I'll put a question mark. Comma, Whoops. Tomorrow, com, question mark tomorrow. Okay, so you can get the idea of how easy that is, and uh, let's say space. Uh, that sounds really great. Cap H A T S S I U N T S sounds E A L. Now it's bubbling, which means it it's trying to auto correct that word, and I can look up above the keyboard on screen here. Messages, vertical apps, button, message, send, eel, selected, real, really. Okay, so when it bubbles like that, that means it's autocorrect, and if you press space or a punctuation there, it will insert it, but in this case, you can look above the keyboard and see there are three choices. I have eel, real, and really, so I actually want to use really, really, really. I didn't have to do that. I could have kept typing. Return. And it has space. The space already there. So now let's G type great. Okay, it was going to say good. Did you notice that when I typed the G, it was going to put an O-O-D. As soon as I typed the R, now it says great. So we're going to just put an exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. Great. So we typed, that sounds really great. I typed it very slowly so that you could hear how the um, auto, uh, the quick type works. But in reality, I saved myself a ton of time because I said, uh, how are you? 
by simply typing H-O-W-A. I uh, said, can we have lunch tomorrow? And the, the have was filled in after only the letter H. The word lunch was filled in after only the letter L. And the tomorrow was after, I don't remember, a few letters. Okay. So for people that say, it doesn't save me any time because I know what I want to type. Yes, it does. Because even though you know what you want to type, you can't type 12 characters or eight characters in half a second like this can when you press space or punctuation. So it absolutely does save you time once you know how to use it properly. Now, you can get to a point where you type so fast that you just ignore the autocorrect. And that's a, or an, an autocorrect. I apologize. Quick quick type. You can type so fast that you ignore the quick type and that's okay too. That's not going to hurt anything. Again, you can always type whatever you want. You can always ignore what it is suggesting to you. Always. Okay. You don't have to worry. People, again, you get hung up on, well, I don't want what it says. You don't have to just keep typing. Just don't worry about it. Just ignore it. Right. It doesn't matter. It, I, it wanted to put good in there when I said sounds really, and I didn't want good. I wanted great. So I kept typing. Now, it, it recognized great as soon as I typed the GR. And this is really good because it uses context and it uses what you are saying. It, it uses your, your behavior. It learns what you type, how you like to type, how you like to speak. I often end my uh, messages to people with God bless you and take care. And so it knows now, like if I want to do that. Exclamation space capture S. Oops, okay. S T now space. I got God B L. It might be it might fill that in. S but I'm gonna A N D space T X E Take Space Take R Space Care. And it knew that I wanted to type that. And sometimes it will do three or four words for you. All right. It's not always just filling in the same word. Sometimes, like you saw with how are you, it filled in the R and the U. And I've seen it fill in as much as probably as many as four words consecutively that I didn't have to type by just letting it do. And this is new for iOS 17. This is a fantastic feature. And it's it's getting a lot of, um, it might be too harsh to say that it's getting a lot of criticism, but a lot of people, as I said, just don't try it because they don't, they're not comfortable with it and they don't like it because they haven't seen how much of a benefit it could be and to me it's it is absolutely fantastic it's personal preference of course but again you can just ignore it if you don't want it you, you don't have to do what it says so it's just trying to give you helpful suggestions so anytime that you um you know you hear something that you do want just immediately press the space bar or put in a, a punctuation and it will insert that thing for you again sometimes two three even four words maybe back to back so that is, uh, that's direct touch typing. And that's the other typing modes. I didn't do slide to type. In order to use slide to type with voiceover, you have to be in touch typing mode, not direct touch, but touch typing. And then basically what you do is you hold your finger down and you slide from one position to another. And that's why it's often referred to as slide to type, but it's also known as quick pass typing. It's a combination of autocorrect and quick type all working together to try to determine what you're going to say. And I'm sure it's gotten even better in iOS 17, but I don't personally like it that much. Um, if you are going to try it, you have to be committed to using it for a while if you really actually want it to work for you. And the reason I say that is because, again, the, the dictionary on these devices learns your typing behavior. And so if I type the word hello and I do H and I keep my finger held down and slide to E, it might try to type heel, hello, you know, different, different words that start with an H-E. But the more and more I type, the more accurate it's going to become. And the fewer slides it's going to take to actually get the correct word. And as soon as you hear the correct word, you can just lift your finger and it, and it's, it gets inserted for you. Um, I, I played with it and, you know, initially when it was released, I don't remember when that was uh, iOS 13, maybe, or, or somewhere around there. Uh, and it's fine. As I said, it works with voiceover quite well, but I, that is one case where I believe I can actually type more quickly by just using direct touch, uh, because I don't have to think about, well, is that, you know, where am I sliding to? It's the same thing. You got to know what the keyboard layout is. Right. But I just, to me, you know, personal preference, right. Goes a long way. 
So you could try it if you want, but you have to have the, the typing mode set to touch typing. And as I said, I really think it's important if, if it's actually something you want to do and you want it to be successful for you, you're going to have to be committed to using it for a while. Don't just try it once or twice. And if it's not getting it perfect, just give up because it, it, that's how it's going to learn is the more and more that you use it and the more you do it. Your general typing should impact that as well. So it's not all about what you do in the quick path, but I still say be committed to spending some time with it um, if you want it to be a success. So those are the typing modes. Those are the, uh, you know, and, and everything else you've learned up to this point, split tap and, you know, all those things, that all works too. It's all, it's all relevant. Um, we are not going to learn advanced editing today, as I said. Uh, I think you can already see because we've taught the rotor that if I have my rotor set to characters or words, I can go back and read what I've typed, either back or forward. It doesn't matter. I also want to tell you, if you repeatedly double tap the edit field, it will toggle you between the beginning and the end of the edit field. So I'm going to tap up above the keyboard, kind of right in the center of the phone here. And message text field is editing. Hi, hi there. Hi there. <laughs> hi there. <laughs> That's what he typed all that. You? But I'll show you. How are you? Can we have lunch tomorrow? That sounds really great. All right. God bless and take care. All right. Now, I, if I want you to, if I want to do uh, a quick jump back to the beginning of the in, of the edit field, I just double tap right now. Insertion point at start. And again. Insertion point at end. And again. Insertion point at start. Again. Insertion point at end. Again. Insertion point at start. So every time I double tap in that edit field, it's moving the insertion point quickly, beginning, end, beginning, end. And then I have an option in the rotor called edit, which uh, I'm not going to teach that today, but I'm going to use it because I want to select all. Mentions, miss, edit, select, scan, select all. Double tap. Hi, hi there. Delete, selection deleted. Hi, and I just there. quickly deleted everything. So that's how easy that is. And by the way, you still can do your shake to undo. For those who know what that is, you can shake the device to undo the, the typing that you just did. And um, you have your text selection rotor for our, our more advanced users who are already doing this. You can use text selection. You know, we're going to teach that later. That's not today. Okay, I'm just trying to teach you the basics of how to type so that you can fill in a you know, a, a form and sign into something if you don't have it saved in your keychain yet and all of that, because the new users may not. Uh, so we have a sort of an overview of the keyboard and the different typing modes. And my favorite one being direct touch typing. Of course, we can also dictate. And again, there is a microphone button, an icon rather, down at the bottom of the screen here. Space. Down below that, it's uh, down in this bottom row of... Remote dictate, dimmed. And that's Don't your... That's your... um. Double That's your dictate option. And then um, basically, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to have to look and see who that is that's calling me because uh, that's not a call I need to take right now. But um, maybe it'll show up in my notification center here. I have to not have to disturb on. And it's, uh, yeah, it's going to tell me. Who. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, I know what that is. Okay, perfect. All right. So, it, it, uh, anyhow, back to what we were doing here. Uh, so, if we uh, if we want to, we can also uh, dictate by finding and double tapping that microphone icon, or I can do my magic tap as long as my voiceover cursor is focused on the edit and the keyboard, and I can magic tap and I can speak and I can I can say my punctuation if I want to, but a lot of times I don't even have to now because it's pretty smart and it automatically knows what punctuation I want. So we're going to try it both ways, but I want to uh, I want to also tell you there may be some errors if you don't speak your punctuation, but most of the time it gets it right. When you dictate, just speak naturally. Don't if you you know don't speak like a robot, don't you know just talk naturally. And I'm going to try it now and we'll see what it does. Hello. How are you doing today? Would you like to have lunch tomorrow? I think we are having a great class today. Inserted hello, how are you doing today? Would you like to have lunch tomorrow? I think we are having a great class today. And you can already tell by the way voiceover is reading that 
that it put the question marks where it's supposed to. And I suspect we also have the period at the end. Period. Yep. Period. Yep. So, I mean, praise God. Really, I don't need to make any changes. I said I was going to do it with the punctuation. I don't think you need me to demonstrate that. I could have. How are you doing today? Question mark. You know, the only thing I might have done is put a comma after hello. Hello, comma. How are you? But I mean, you know, honestly, we don't need to be picky, right? Um, if I want to do that, we're going to teach you later how to edit. I can quickly go. We sent message insertion K -F -F -O. comma comma hello space and now send message text field is editing. Hello, how are you doing today? Would you like to have lunch tomorrow? I think we are having a great class today. Yeah, and that's even tomorrow. better. And by the way, if you are dictating and you want to speak your punctuation, you can say comma, period, exclamation mark, question mark. You can say cap and it'll capitalize the next word or letter. Uh, you can say new line and it puts in a, a, a you know, a, a, a line break for you, uh, like a pressing the return. Uh, you can say like smiley, um, winky and frowny and it'll put in the um, uh, the letters that make that. It's not actually putting in the emoji, I don't think. Or maybe now it does. I think somebody said now it does. It used to do like the colon and the, you know, whatever to make the the smiley face, but I think maybe, I don't remember. But anyway, you have these little tricks, you know, that you can do and dictation is very useful. I just want to go on to a little bit of a soapbox though for a moment. And for some reason, we offend people sometimes when we do this. And I apologize if that's you, because I don't want to offend anybody, but it needs to be said, whether it offends you or not, <laughs> truthfully, uh, it, it needs to be said. And that is don't use blindness as an excuse for poor dictation. OK, because I see that sometimes in emails or whatever. And people, say, you know, please, they'll put it in like their signature or they're, you know, please bear with me. I'm blind and using dictation. No, you're blind, but you're perfectly capable of learning how to edit what you dictated. So learn how to edit what you've dictated and do it and make the corrections, because if you go for a professional job interview or something like that, that is not going to fly. Uh, they have to base their decisions on something. If they get 30 applicants or 100 applicants, and if you have poor typing skills because you haven't learned how to do it properly and how to go back and edit, that's going to be a problem. So learn the proper methods. And, and you know what? Praise God, you're in the right place to do that because we're going to teach you that in this class. All right. So there's no no excuse. You can learn it. You can master it. You'll be just fine. Um, and And what I said all that to say, too, is check your typing, whether you've typed it yourself or you've dictated it, but especially if you've dictated it because Siri and the dictation speech recognition engine and all of this, they are excellent. They're absolutely amazing. And praise God, they are gifts from God, but they're still artificial intelligence and they're not perfect. And sometimes they will get it wrong. Sometimes you have an accent that they don't, that, you know, get along so well with. Sometimes you just didn't say it as clearly as they wanted you to say it. Sometimes you said it perfectly and they were just having a moment. The dictation engine, you know, uh, sometimes it'll get like two and, and two, you know, T-W-O versus T-O-O versus T-O. I haven't seen that recently, praise God. That seems to have finally been improved. But that was something that was a struggle for a long time where it seemed like it just would get that wrong on occasion. Not often, but sometimes. Um, so that's something where you want to read back what you've typed. You don't want to say something that you, you know, accidentally didn't mean to say. And the next thing you know, you know, you, you, you insulted somebody or you said something that you wouldn't normally say, you know, uh, I've even seen a few cases where, uh, uh one friend of mine in particular that, that Siri is convinced that this lady you know, uses profanity and she doesn't. I mean, if you know her, she, you know, I, I'm not sure that I've ever known her to maybe once in all the years I've known her to, to speak a, a profane word, but, but that's not who she is. That's not her, you know, but when she talks Siri, certain words that she says, it, it thinks that she's saying something else and she's swearing. And sometimes that carries over to dictation. So you don't want to be embarrassed if you can help it. So check what you've dictated, read it back. A lot of times, after you stop the dictation with that two finger double tap, that magic tap, voiceover is automatically going to read what you have dictated, just like it did for me. It said inserted, and then it reads it to you. But it may not always do that. And the reason for that is sometimes 
well, but one of the reasons for that is that, you know, technology is made by humans and it's not always perfect. But the other reason is because dictation now happens on the device and, and not online. It's not sending what you type up to the servers. And sometimes it is for certain things, but it still allows you to have basically limitless dictation, continuous dictation for as long as you want. I could literally dictate the entire Gettysburg Address or the Constitution, except I don't know them, but I mean theoretically, and and it would it would keep dictating. It wouldn't. You remember the days? Some of you who have used Voiceover and used iOS specifically for a long, long time used to be a limit. You know, after a while, it would just bing, it would just stop you, and it would that would be it. You'd have to do another dictation session after that, and that's not the case anymore. You can dictate to your heart's content, and it will not stop you. But voiceover is not always going to read all that because it gets inserted in such a way that maybe it's only going to re have the last paragraph in voiceover's mind there. So don't rely only on the automatic reading back of what you've dictated. I mean, maybe it is, and that's fine, but it doesn't hurt you to check it out. It doesn't hurt you to go into your edit field and read it. You can tap on the edit field or swipe away from it and swipe back to it, and it'll automatically read the entire edit field for you, or if it's really long, set your rotor to words or lines and swipe up and down and read it line by line or word by word. And if you find a word that sounds suspect, then set the rotor to characters and read that word letter by letter. Um, and, and it, you know, it's going to be a, uh, sometimes it, it sometimes it's a, a bit of a mirror too, right? Cause our minds make, um, connections that artificial intelligence simply can't. Right. And I, I, I found out recently that sometimes when I say the word and, like A-N-D, I don't always enunciate the D perhaps as well as I should, especially if it's in the middle of a sentence somewhere. And, uh, you know, when that happens, I, I get the word and, like capital A-N-N, -N, that voice that, that uh, the dictation engine thinks I'm saying. And you know that when you're reading it back, you can tell that something's not quite right. You can then set your rotor to words, characters, read it and fix it. And that's the important part about it. It's not that you necessarily have to have a flawless dictation session, although sometimes you will, by the way, sometimes they are. But it's it's more important that you know how to check what you've typed, go back and fix it. And as I said, you're in the right place to learn how to do that. I think you've got a little bit of that already because you're starting to see these things and you're starting to see how we can use the rotor and we can use the, you know, uh, the delete and stuff. I, I haven't got into where the insertion point is relative to where the um what what voiceover is saying we're not going to do that today that's going to be saved for our uh, more advanced editing topic but i think you you can start to play with it for sure and it you know it may be it may be a bit of a learning experience for you right now but that's okay we're very very early on in this course yet we are uh you know we're, we're um we're only on session four, the fourth session, and we're going to, you know, go all the way through to the, you know, not quite middle or maybe middle of December, at least early December. So we got a lot of time left in this course, a lot of learning yet to do. So, you know, don't don't worry about it. We're going to get there. But I think it's really good that we gave you and, I, you know, I spent perhaps a little more time than I initially had intended to today on keyboard, but I think it was worth it. And I hope you do, too, because I think it'll really help you. Keyboards are nice for long, you know, stuff. If you're going to be, you know, editing some documents or reading, doing some text, you know, or if you plan on having a long text exchange of a conversation. But for quick stuff, you know, intermediate stuff, the touchscreen is where it's at. Is there an app or something that you would recommend to go into just to do practice? <laughs> Well, if you're looking for an app where you can just type freestyle and just practice anything, um, you might try the notes app or even the messages app. If it, you know, it, the biggest thing is you don't have to send the message or, you know, do it in a, a conversation with a, a family member or a friend who's not going to care if you do send it. Uh, but, you know, notes is another good app to practice in. I would like to put um, typing mode on my rotor and I, I found the rotor, but it didn't have typing listed as a, an option. So how do I put that on my rotor? 
settings. Go to settings. Setting accessibility. Vision. Adding. Accessibility. Voiceover. Oh, right, got voice over voiceover. Speech items on then. the screen. Speech. Braille. Voiceover. Verbosity. Audio. Command. Rotor. Button. Rotor. Rotor items. Button. And then rotor items. Selected. Uh -huh. Characters reordered. Selected words. Re selected block. Re selected text. Re speaking rate. It's pretty far down, I think. So I'm gonna. Volume. Audio. Function. Sounds. Hints. Braille. Braille up. Activity. Braille. Handwrap. Selected. Screen. Re selected. Containers. Selected. Headings. Selected. Links. Selected. Form control. Tables. List. Land. Article. Visited. Non. -it. Selected. Buttons. Text fields. Search fields. Images. Static text. Zoom. Same item. Selected. Vertical navigation. Selected. Typing mode. Yep. Yep. It's there. Oh, it's there. I, I guess I just didn't go far enough. You mentioned about the double space being a shortcut for the period. Is there a list of shortcuts or like, for example, not all email address edit fields have the at and a period net to the right of the space bar, whereas some do, some don't. But for example, is there a shortcut for the at sign or is there a list of shortcuts? And do you know of such a beast that exists? So there's a couple of things I will respond to. I like this question. This is a, a fun one that, you know, is not necessarily for our new users, but obviously you're more advanced and we have others like you. So I'll go ahead and answer this. As far as the shortcuts, the built-in ones, really the period shortcut and the, um, th that, that's about the only one that does quite like that. But there's a place under settings and then general and then keyboards where there's something called text replacement. They have one in there by default, which is that if you type the sequence OMW, it actually replaces it with the words on my way. But you can add your own personal text replacements in there. And so like trainer Rita often gives the example of like, if you want it to quickly insert your email address, you can create a text replacement that's like the letters EML. And so that when you type EML and then put a space, it automatically inserts your entire email address for you instead of the letters EML. It, it, you have to be very selective. Like it doesn't let you use things that are real words already when you're creating the, the shortcut. I actually use that every day. Do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> it saves a lot of time. Like you just said, type in email addresses or a phrase like oh, heck yeah. my signature. Like you, like you said, um, what you put at the end of yours. I have something when I'm type, typing to somebody in my ministry. I have a certain uh, verse for um, certain groups that I that I like to type, but I don't want to have to copy and paste it every time. So I use text replacement as, uh, you know the way to do that and there's a there's a few general rules that text replacement uses you can't use vowels um uh, it does, um consistent vowels i should say so you can't use a text replacement that is i o u or a e something it has to be alternate characters of a vowel and a consonant it has to be if it doesn't if it's not it will not accept it you can't use an actual word it has to be a combination of letters and I haven't tried numbers, so I can't say if that's one or not. But I do know that it can't be a word, and it can't be consistent characters. It has to have at least a vowel and a consonant after each other. It can't be all consonants and all vowels ran together. So you can actually create multiple uh, text replacement or yes, you whatever. Can. Uh, you, could yes, whole, cool. you could have a whole library really of them. Cool. I, have about yeah, 30, yeah. I have about 30 of them. But yeah, you want to get used to that quick bar above the letters U, I, and O that has like your auto fill, auto correct, all that stuff. Because like, for example, if you type the phrase, my email address is, and put a space, your email address will show up on that quick bar. It'll have like your, if you have more than one, even it'll have like work and home and whatever. Or if you put my phone number is. It'll display up there, iPhone or home. You just double tap the one you want and it will insert it. So that's another way of doing that. That's not using text replacement. That's technically using autofill and um, and quick type, I guess, together probably. But that's a, another thing you can do with specifically like email address for your own email address or your own phone number anyway.
I want to I want to encourage people that you know we're teaching you a, a little introduction to the keyboard here and how to type, slide to type, and all that. But one thing that I didn't do a lot of until I got to iOS 17 because it has gotten a whole lot better. It is the, the dictation. Matt said you just have to speak in a normal voice and it would, you know, put in there. It used to get things mixed up like spaghetti and call it spaghetti and um, fried chicken. But now when I go yeah. back and read the dictation before I send it, because we encourage you read it before you send it because you never know what it's, it did put in there. But nine times out of ten these days and maybe even 99 out of 100 these days when I dictate something voiceover or the dictation has put in there exactly how I would have wrote it commas periods yep. question marks capital yep. letters it even spells my name right and that's right. what I essentially right. use out in public is dictation because I don't like I said I don't want to carry around a big old keyboard in my back pocket or my inside coat pocket whatever you know it, it's in my car my glove compartment whatever so if I do need it but in if I'm out and about church you know mall whatever I, i'm not gonna stop and sit down just so i can pull out a keyboard and type i'm just gonna walk and dictate so in it, it like right. i said it's gotten a, a lot more accurate than it has been in the past all right before we go to the next person matt i want to make a modification you talked about today when you were typing about the caps lock key and since you were on the ipad it doesn't show you this so let me turn up my phone and show the people what they can do instead of quadruple tapping the caps lock key selected shift that says shift. Wiping up. Caps lock. Exactly. You don't have to quadruple tap on the phone, Matt. You can just swipe right. up. Actually, I thought I did show that. That's the rotor action for it. But yeah, that, that's nope, you very didn't. convenient if you don't want to have to quadruple tap. Yep, I remember. I, I was actually here for the whole yeah. class. So no, you did not mention that. You just said quadruple <laughs> tap. So I wanted to show them that they could swipe up to double tap yep. and not have to worry about tapping two that more times. That is a rotor action. Yep. So, just, and the you know, fencing has begun. And, you know, just because I like to correct you anyway. So. <laughs> I have one question Hello. about the predictive patterns above the keyboard. Let's say you're typing and it comes up with like three words like it did when you were typing that you might want. How do you how did you select that the word you wanted or words you wanted? Did you tap above the keyboard or did you space on it or what did you do? Just space or punctuation. The only time I actually reached above the keyboard was when I heard the bubble okay, sound second. and my, there were like three different choices. My switch but... over is talking. You, you spaced. Did you, how did you select it? You spaced on what? Just space or punctuation and it puts it in automatically. But if there was three words, like, um, you know, one was... Yeah, that was what? the one time that I, I, when it made the bubble sound, I looked up there and there were three words. One of them was already selected. So if you wanted the one that was selected, you could push the space right then and there or the punctuation. Otherwise, if you want a different one, just double tap on it. Oh, just space on the one. So okay. can you just, uh, that can you just swipe? Thank you. Can you just swipe to the right, Matt? Yes. Yes. For the next one. Yeah. Yes. God bless you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We will be back on Monday with more voiceover in and out. We'd like to thank you again for joining voiceover, voiceover. in and out 2023. Didn't get your question answered? Need additional training? Send us an email at support at ttjtech.biz or support at stirritup.com and remember stir is spelled with a u that's s-t-u-r-i-t-u-p dot com i'm trainer cliff thanks for joining us and see you next time god bless <laughs>